Welcome to the Riders Guide to the Mega Avalanche, where I'm gonna pass on as many tips as I can to help you make a trip yourselves. It's pretty gusty up here, so we're gonna drop down to the next level and continue the guide. <laughs> from the wind I've stumbled across this amazing incredible view but before I turn around and show you what's behind I'm gonna chuck the drone up into the sky and show you a bit of an aerial this is postcard material bloody lovely The main race is the longest downhill race in the world. Uh, about 20 kilometers, 2,700 meters of descent, and the pros are knocking that down in about 40 minutes. So for average Joe, you're probably looking around the hour to the hour and a half mark, really. So you can, you can arrive at this event whenever you like. Um, the actual event is only based across two races, which is your qualification and your main event. Um, you can make a week out of it, come and buy a six day lift pass, get a few more practice runs in, and uh, or you can just turn up uh, midweek and do a day's practice straight into qualification. A tip, my personal tip is if you've not done it before, why not come out and make a week of this because there's plenty of trails in the valley i'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail in a minute um but I, yeah i think a week is definitely uh the way i play it going going ahead um, but yeah you can come in and punch this event out if you really just want to do the event and take off Anyone can actually do this. If you're a capable rider or someone who's looking to challenge themselves, um, you can do this event. You don't have to be Killian Bron to enter this because there's a group for everyone and the qualification is a separate trail and that's a smaller mass start from slightly lower down and where you finish in that event puts you into your group for the mega. So if you don't qualify into the front 35, you will still get to race, but you'll be racing in a different group, whether that's the amateurs or the challengers. Um, they've also got groups for e-bikers, women's, and uh, I think that's it, but, um, and the kids, mega kids. So yeah, there's really a group for everyone. <laughs> One thing that's blown me away about this event is um, the atmosphere in the town. They set up a, a mini race village and there's some big bright brands coming in and they're sort of putting some music on in the town. There's a big tent, sort of a few free beers and just overall great atmosphere. And the qualification race this year finished in the center of town in the plaza and it was just pretty electric everyone buzzed after their run apart from me <laughs> after such a diabolical qualification but anyway i'm not going to go into that here <laughs> We're based in Alpe d'Huez, which is the, the heart of the Mega Avalanche. But there's also some neighboring smaller towns that do have gondolas that run from them. So it is possible to stay at these, but you will be reliant on getting these gondolas uh, to the, the start of the main trails. You've got the likes of Oz and Wazon, I think that's how you pronounce it, Vaugenet, um, yeah, which are all linked on the same lift pass and there's trails going down to these areas which are pretty amazing. I'm just gonna cut to a couple of clips of uh, one of the, des the descents down into Oz and it uh, blew my mind actually. I really didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Here's a couple of clips.
crazy terrain. Yes, that. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, bye. That's so good. I love how it keeps going like soil rock, soil rock. That is just phenomenal. And a neighboring mountain is uh, Le Deux Alpes. And you can effectively drive down the, the legendary um, Tour de France bends. And there is a, a gondola from there that can take you up to Le Deux Alpes. And there's a whole other mountain that you can explore. But we've had a week here and we haven't had time to venture over there. So definitely if you've got a week's pass, it's possible to get over to Le Deux Alpes, make a day out of it and just try somewhere new. Right, let's uh, move on from this lovely spot and uh, let's go and talk about some of the trails on offer. what is the start of the qualification really. The top of qualification is a bit of a fire road with pretty techy section, but this is where it really starts getting a bit more single tracky. As you can see, it's really rough around the edges. Um, down here, there's some uh, pretty technical rock features that you can't just plow through. You're definitely gonna want uh, a level of skill that is gonna be able to react to any sort of situation that you're thrown into. Because there will be times where you're all of a sudden you're on a line that you don't really want to be on. I think you've just got to have the skill to be able to ride that out. Uh, if you're not at that level, then it's going to be a tough time. It's worth noting there is always um, easier routes around these tricky features, but there's also the quick line, which is nine times out of ten quite quite technical. Uh, you're going to have to risk it for a biscuit. Um, you can see here the rock features here there's there's a lot of rock slab um, and the, the terrain is very unforgiving here it's quite rugged uh, hard on the bike hard on the body um, but you do have uh, underneath DMC1 lots of flow trails there um, so you can get your eye in down there pick some flowy lines uh, but as soon as you come up to DMC2 Pete Blanc uh, things get a bit more technical You might look at the trail map before you arrive here and think there's not a huge amount on offer but the trails they do have are very long descents we're talking like the main mega avalanche trail will take you an hour and a half two hours to get down and um, you think a couple of days during this week we've just literally done a lap of that had a long lunch and that's been us um, so definitely don't be put off by the amount of trail here because uh, you're gonna wanna get a few practice runs in and they're really long runs. Um, the other stuff scattered around the hill is really fun as well. So if you're wanting to take this event on, you might be wondering about finding the best way to get to resort. Uh, your closest airport is Geneva and it's gonna be a few hour transfer from there. But it's worth bearing in mind, there's no regular buses, um, so you're going to want a group of you to split the cost of a transfer, which is around 400 bucks. Um, so in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, best way is to drive down, fill the van if you can, all your spares, fill the front seats and you can uh, split that and it keeps cost down. Um, roughly it took me in the van one and a half tanks of fuel to get here and about 100 euros in tolls. Um, we're looking at about, well, Satnav says eight and a half hours from Calais. So you're more looking around 10, 10 and a half hours with a couple of stops, uh, a bit of traffic. So there you go. Driving, got to be the one, especially for this event. You're going to want a few spares and tools for your bike. Before I ride to take on the Mega Avalanche, one thing that put me off was the thought of sitting in queues all day. Um, I've seen pictures and at the end of the day you've got 
thousands of riders trying to get to one place. So I thought that's one of the reasons that kind of put me off the event. But uh, it's not actually as bad as you think. Because the trails are so long, uh, people do get spread out across a hill quite a lot. Uh, across the board and throughout the rest of the week, there really isn't much queuing involved. So um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a reason to be put on bike. I think it's fair to say that Alpe d'Huez is not the prettiest of ski towns. There's a lot of apartments and uh, not the greatest looking place, but the views make up for it. Here's a quick look at some of the accommodation types you can stay in here. So you've got everything from like real swanky apartments to bare, bare bones campsites here. Um, the general majority of people seem to be um, staying in the apartment blocks and buying maybe like a, a single room with a pull-out bed in it. You get four people in there, you can slash your costs down. Uh, there's plenty of apartments in town. You've also got the chalet hotels, uh, which is actually where I'm staying. And we're, you've got roughly 30 guests in a place um, with its own sort of terraces and stuff like that. So as far as the campsites go, you've got one at the finish line of the race. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, you're a bit out of the way down there but that could work potentially. You've got a free campsite in Alpe d'Huez, but uh, I think it's real bare bones and someone I know is camping down there and um, he woke up with a car, a car uh, bumper sort of brushing over the side of his tent. It's every man for himself down there, but there is a campsite there if you need it. So as if there's not already been enough information in this video, I'm gonna pepper you now with some like bullet point tips that I think can help you out. First one, if it's your first time, ride the race trails from top to bottom as soon as you can, because you're gonna arrive, you arrive in town with a lot of anxiety, especially for the first time. And I don't know about everyone else, but I felt a lot more at ease once I'd got down the tracks once. Another thing, kind of obvious, but I thought I was entering a downhill race there's actually 150 meters of ascent during the race. So there's some long uphill sprints. So get as fit as you can, get those sprints dialed because it will really help you uh, come on in the race. Um, one thing worth noting as well, the air at the top is just ridiculously thin. You really feel it in the lungs and you're breathing real heavy as soon as you come out the gate. So yeah, you're having a good level of fitness, of course, uh, but in particular, sort of sprint, sprint pace and endurance is gonna be your ticket to the podium. Make sure you get a look at the very top section of the quali track, because uh, throughout the week, you have easy access to two thirds of the trail and you can practice that as much as you want. But during the week, occasionally, or towards the end, they open up the next part of the access to the top half of the track, and it's well worth looking at, because there's a really technical rock section with some drops or some, uh, some snow as well. So make sure you get a proper look at the quali, the top of quali. On race day, if you're qualifying towards the front of your group, you're gonna be getting on the lift around quarter past six, half six in the morning and waiting around probably for an hour or so, a couple of hours realistically for everyone to get lined up. So take a jacket and you can dump it at the top in bags and they bring it down for you to grab at the end. So in the evenings, you're gonna be starving, you're gonna be thirsty, head over to Smithy's Tavern. They've got monster burgers, good beer skis and uh, just overall good vibes. So head over there, they're in the main strip and tell them I sent you, they might sort you out of a bit of a deal. So there we have it, hope that's helped a few of you guys out and gonna make your trip a bit easier. But yeah, if you wanna see my race run, let the carnage unfold over in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching, see you in the next one.